The most exciting thing about the Tetrahedron Prize is it is a reflection of all the work that all the students and postdocs have done and that other people are excited about that work. I mean, we're always excited about it, but it's really gratifying to see other people care about it as well. So we've been studying uh, the biological roles of carbohydrates for a long time. We started um, by studying their roles in cell-cell recognition in us, in inflammation. And our goal was really to develop strategies to, let's say, mimic the carbohydrates on the surface of the cell. So to do that, we use polymer chemistry to make uh, little cell mimics. And um, we could show that those were really potent inhibitors. And then we got interested in using them to actually activate responses. So um, where we've gone from there is to be uh, interested broadly in that um, kind of interaction in terms of vaccines. But it's also really important in both in activating immunity and dampening down immunity. And we have recently found a protein that is in us that actually selectively recognizes the sugars on the surface of microbes. And we're really interested in the role of this protein and other proteins like that in our gut, because we think they're really important maybe in uh, influencing the microbial population. So we're also studying their roles in human development and stem cells. We find carbohydrates play really important roles in um, differentiation and propagation of uh, stem cells. And uh, we're also looking at how cells build their carbohydrate walls. So all of this is um, about carbohydrates, I guess, as IDs. I have this quote from one of my heroes, Emil Fischer, which um, where in his Nobel Prize lecture, he said, essentially, well, now we hope to understand proteins just like we understand carbohydrates. And it's funny because he did such beautiful pioneering work in both fields, but at the time people didn't know you could just code for proteins. So proteins, we can change their structures by coding for them. We can't do that for carbohydrates. And so what that means is we really need chemistry. We need chemistry to have access to the reagents and access to tools to probe uh, these kinds of processes. But then we need to take that chemistry and use it to solve the problems, to, to really understand what the issues are. And so uh, that's where I think interdisciplinarity comes in. So to me, it's really the key because if we have tools, but they're not solving a real problem, what is the point of that? I just loved looking at molecules and trying to understand how they interact. And in fact, my whole research program, I think is built on an argument I had at the board when I was a grad student. So we were looking at this natural product that I was um, making the core of, colichomycin, and it had these weird sugars. And I got an argument with my lab partners that there's, I thought the sugars did something, and they thought they were just there for solubility. So we had this argument, and now that's what I work on. No one ever sets out to inspire anybody. They just set out because they're curious about science. And I think that um, maintaining that curiosity maybe is the best thing that we can do for the younger people. One person at MIT who was really inspirational to me, uh, which was uh, Barry Sharpless. Barry just had a wonder about chemistry. I, I think that that wonder of just about chemistry and science and about how the world works is really something that inspired me and that I would hope that I could use to inspire other young people. Everybody needs mentors. Jackie Barton was actually the first woman scientist that I ever saw that I thought, oh, here's a woman academic scientist that, you know, is someone that I would like to be like. You know, if we don't have enough examples of how to do it with different kinds of personalities, different styles, different ways of being in the world, 
um, then women don't get a clear picture. They don't see themselves in any of us, and then they think, well, I couldn't do that. So we need a critical mass. When you have a really diverse lab, they think of things that you would never think of yourself. And, and that can really uh, change how science is done and really strengthen science in a big way. So I've been fortunate to have these intrepid students who will go and do things that I don't know how to do myself. And so I think that takes a certain amount of courage audaciousness spirit to do, to do that. And so I've, like I said, I'm really fortunate to have people that are just like, okay, let's go figure this out.